Hello everyone. Uh, the first topic of our programming languages course is the concept of uh, abstract machine. Uh, as we will see, uh, this concept is closely related to programming languages. Uh, in particular, the, the concept of abstract machine is related to the implementation of programming languages. Uh, like the terms interpreter and compiler, which we will uh, discuss later in this lecture or in the coming lectures. Now, uh, as you know, uh, abstraction mechanisms are really crucial in the field of computer science. So why is that? Well, it's because they allow us to isolate, isolate the, the important aspects and abstract away from the details. Just to give you one example, uh, just consider uh, the concept of abstract data type, ADT, which is something that you might have learned in a course on data structures. The important aspects of the abstract data type are isolated by providing operations on the data type how the data type or, or how the operations are implemented is of no concern to the user and generally hidden. Now here's the outline of the talk on, on abstract uh, machines. We start with the concepts, the general concepts of abstract machines and the interpreter, and then we talk about implementation issues for a programming language. So let's start with the concept. Uh, but before we do that, let us just uh, refresh our memories regarding the digital computer. What is it? A, an electronic digital computer is a physical machine that executes algorithms which are suitably formalized. What does this really mean? Well, for our discussion, we formalize algorithms in a particular programming language, and then uh, we execute those algorithms on a physical machine. Now, an abstract machine is nothing more than an abstraction of this concept of the physical computer. Uh, an abstract machine permits step-by-step -step execution of a program, just as is the case for a physical machine, but it's abstract in the sense that it omits the many details of a real physical machine. So that's why it's abstract, because we don't have to think about the m many details of the real physical machine. We abstract away from the details. Now, we can't really discuss the concept of uh, an abstract machine without at the same time talk about a language. Because the algorithms that we want to execute must really re be represented using the instructions of our language, a programming language. And we call it here L, the programming language. And the syntax of L allows us to use a given final set of constructs called instructions to construct these programs. So given this uh, background, we can now formally define an abstract machine Assume that we are given a programming language, L. An abstract machine for L, denoted by ML, is any set of data structures and algorithms which can perform the storage and execution of pro programs written in L. So notice that the abstract machine is any set of data structures and algorithms which can perform the storage and execution of programs written in L. So it's important that we're able to execute 
the programs written in this programming language L using our abstract machine. Uh, sometimes we do not choose to specify the language L and in that case we will just simply talk about uh, the abstract machine M omitting the subscript. Uh, so, what is the general structure of an abstract machine? Uh, well, we can say that it divided into two main parts. It's the memory part and it's the interpreter part. On the memory side, we have the program uh, that we want to execute and it, it, it resides in memory and we have the data that it's really the input to the program and that resides in memory as well. And the uh, interpreter has then uh, a number of operations that are needed to be able to execute uh, our program. And uh, these operations are divided into sequence control, data control, memory management. And uh, let us actually go into uh, some detail for each of these types of operations. So we can say that the interpreter must perform the operations that are specific to the language it is interpreting. Remember that we are working with a programming language here that we call L. And uh, the interpreter must have some uh, operations that are specific to this language that we are trying to execute or interpreting. So the type of operations that we have is we have, uh, opera first we have operations for processing primitive data. What do we mean by primitive data? Uh, primitive data uh, is, for example, numbers, integers, or reals. Uh, th these are in most, almost all, always, uh, all, in almost all cases, primitive data in in, in uh, abstract machines or even fi or even in physical machines. Uh, and uh, it, they are primitive in the sense that they are directly represented by the machine. For example, for in the case of physical machines, they are directly uh, 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 represented as a sequence of bits. Now, the second type of operation here is uh, operations and data structures for controlling the sequence of executions of operations. What do we mean here? Uh, well, we have to be able to controlling the sequence of uh, execution. For example, if we have a loop in our program, we have to be able to execute the statements inside the loop and then jump to the beginning of the loop to test the condition that controls whether we, we continue in the loop or not. So there have to be some kind of operations and data structures for allowing us to uh, model this sequence of execution. The third part here is operations and data structures for controlling data transfer. Uh, this is needed in, in, in order to control how operands and data is transferred from memory to the interpreter and vice versa. Uh, remember that when we work with uh, uh, data, uh, we are trying to, we are uh, getting um, information from memory often into variables and then uh, doing some calculations and then uh, uh, returning the results back to memory. 
So that's the this part here. We have to be able to transfer data from the memory uh, and uh, to some uh, um, to the uh, pr processing unit, really, in the case of physical machines, and then back again to memory. And the last part here, operations and data structures for memory management. Uh, these operations, for example, deal with the allocation of memory f uh, for data. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, relatively simple for, for hardware machines, where um, memory is... Uh, allocated at the at the start of the uh, when the program starts and then it it doesn't really change uh, during the execution of the program but for abstract machines that allow for example explicit allocation of memory this is more complex just just to think of uh, for example um, high level languages which allow the programmer explicitly to allocate memory using, for example, new statement in C++. So there have to be some some operations or data structures to uh, to um, to simulate this uh, or or execute uh, uh, this memory allocation. Now. Uh, let's look at the at the general uh, f uh, structure of an interpreter, and this uh, this is really called the execution cycle. So, uh, so what we are looking at here, remember that this is the general structure of our, our ab abstract machine. We have the memory where we have the program that we are interpreting and the data that we that is the input to our program. And then we are now talking about the interpreter. We have talked about some different parts here, the sequence control and the data control and memory management. And now we're talking about the execution cycle of the interpreter itself. So at the very beginning, the interpreter starts by fetching the next instruction to be interpreted. So keep in mind that the interpreter is interpreting a particular program. That's actually the program that is given in this uh, overall structure here. The program resides in memory. So the interpreter must start by fetching the next available instruction of the program that we want to simulate. Uh, once we get the instruction, we need to decode, as it's called. We need to decode the instruction. What does that mean? Uh, it basically means that we need to determine the, the operation to be performed to be performed on the associated operands. So the operands are really the param pa parameters to the to the uh, um, uh, instruction. For example, I mean, if we have an instruction, an add instruction, then there must be some associated parameters that um, uh, to the add instructions. You know, what values are we really going to add? So we need to fetch these operands, and then in the execution phase, we must. Uh, uh, choose the uh, correct uh, operation in the abstract machine that uh, corresponds to the instruction of our program. And we had, might have uh, ma many possibilities here. Uh, and notice that these operations here in, the, in, in our abstract machines are in most cases uh, uh, primitive operations. So we're basically choosing here a primitive operation that 
is uh, kind of directly represented in our machine. Uh, now, once we get our result back, we, we store the result and we go back up again and we fetch, fetch the next instruction of our program. We decode it again to determine the operation to be performed, fetch the operands, and we choose the correct uh, primitive operations to execute in our abstract machine. And we continue to do this unless we, until we, we get uh, uh, some kind of a uh, halt instruction, which uh, means that we should stop. And that basically means that our program, input program, is, is finished. Now, uh, here's another definition. This definition defines machine language. So given an abstract machine, ML, the language L, understood by ML's interpreter, is called the machine language of ML. So we have an ab abstract machine, we call it ML. We have a language, L. Uh, understood by the interpreter of the of ML, and this uh, language is called the machine language of our abstract machine, ML. To to be uh, to exemplify this, uh, think of for example the uh, ja the Java virtual machine. The Java virtual machine is an abstract machine. Uh, why is it an abstract machine? Well, it it uh, permits, for example, step-by-step -step execution of a program. Uh, and it's abstract in the sense that it omits really the many details of a real physical machine. Uh, the language understood by the Java virtual machine is Java bytecode. So, in our definition here, the language L is then Java bytecode. The abstract machine here is G JVM, the, the uh, Java virtual machine. So, Java bytecode is then the machine language of the Java virtual machine. And... Uh, Let me actually see if I can uh, find a uh, web page about the Java Virtual Machine. Here's, for example, the Wikipedia entry. And here it says a Java Virtual Machine, J JVM, is a virtual machine or in, in our terms, an, uh, an abstract machine. So notice that the term virtual machine is often used uh, for the term abstract machine. A Java virtual machine is a virtual machine that can execute Java bytecode. It is the code execution component of the Java software platform. So I think it might be good for you to, to have a look at this. Um, here it says, a Java virtual machine is a program which executes certain other programs, namely those containing Java bytecode instructions. So we, we will be talking about a little bit about uh, uh, the Java virtual machine uh, in the context of abstract machines and, and it might be good for you to, to come back to this uh, web page and, and re read about it to get a better understanding of what we are talking about. So, uh, uh, I at this point it, it should be clear that uh, this concept of abstract machine can be used to describe a variety of different systems. Uh, the Java virtual machine is, is one example. 
uh, the the conventional physical machine is another example, meaning the hardware machine. So uh, the hardware machine is um, physically implemented using uh, logical circuits and el electronic components and uh, uh, let us call the, such a machine uh, MHLH so MH H for hardware and let LH be its machine language. So we could say that the, the, the hardware machine consists of the following parts. It consists of memory, uh, it consists of uh, the interpreter, and it, it consists of the, uh, of, the, of the machine language. So these parts are just the uh, uh, similar to the parts that we talked about earlier for the general in the general structure for abstract machines where we said the, the that this, the abstract machine consists of the memory it consists of an interpreter and in this case we're just adding uh, the machine language itself so if we start with the memory what does that contain well primary secondary memory cache registers all this is, is used for storing data and, and programs. And the data itself is divided into primitive types, integers, reals, characters, and which are uh, directly represented in this hardware machine as bits. All data is represented as bits. As bits. The language itself, well, might contain some simple instru instru instructions. Uh, which uh, can be divided into something called an upcode and then operand 1 and operand 2. Here we're just assuming that each instruction uh, is of this format, operation code, operand 1 and operand 2. And an example would be at R5, R0. In this case, this means that we're adding the contents of, contents of register 5 to the contents of register number 0 and storing the result back into con uh, into register 5. That would be one meaning of this of this uh, instruction. Another instruction would be r uh, at uh, r, uh, the r5 in parenthesis and r0 in parenthesis. And what that means is this is what is called indirect addressing. So we are adding the contents of uh, uh, of uh, uh, the memory address uh, stored in register five, not the value stored in uh, register five, but the uh, the the value that is uh, stored in memory address that R5 points to. So this is called indirect addressing. Uh, now the, the internal representation uh, for these instructions is, uh, is really uh, bits. So instructions uh, are really data just stored in a particular format. We said earlier that all data is represented as bits and the, and, uh, the same holds for uh, instructions. They're also represented as, as bits. Uh, and the set of possible instructions, I mean here we, s we had a look at two, uh, exa uh, one example of instruction, an add instruction, but the set of possible instructions really depends on the particular physical machine. Now, if we uh, come to the interpreter, uh, the interpreter for the hardware machine has built-in operations for arithmetic and, and logical operations. So there are, there are, are uh, some logi logical circuits uh, and uh, that uh, take care of the logical operations, and we have an arithmetic uh, unit that does the calculation. And for the sequence control, Remember, we have to be able to jump in the code, for example, if we have loops. 
Uh, there's a program counter register, you know, a specific register that uh, keeps track of the program counter. Uh, and that register contains the address of the next instruction to execute. Uh, there are also specific, specific registers that are uh, interfacing with main memory that take care of uh, data transfer. When, for example, you're transferring a a, a uh, value to memory, it is often stored first in a register and then transferred from the register to the memory. And uh, uh, the fourth part here, the memory management parts, again depends on the specific arch architecture. In the simplest case, uh, the program is just loaded and it immediately starts executing, so it remains in the memory until it terminates. But in, in many cases, we have some kind of a multitasking or multiprogramming. Uh, actually, that's in, in, in almost always, in, in, in almost all cases, we have some kind of a multiprogramming. And uh, that means that the execution of programs can be suspended to give the CPU to, to other programs for some period of, of time. So the, in this case, for the hardware machine, the interpreter is really implemented as a set of physical devices, and those devices comprise the central processing unit. And then the, the, uh, the interpreter supports this execution of the, of the fetch, decode, execute cycle that we really looked at earlier that's the execution. Here is the figure for the execution cycle of the interpreter. We looked at this before. So for the uh, hardware machine, the, in the fetch phase, the, we, uh, the next instruction is uh, retrieved from memory, and the address of this next instruction is kept in the program counter register. Uh, the, the instruction which consists of an operation code and perhaps some operands, is stored in a special in, uh, register called the instruction register. Then in the decode phase, the instruction stored in the instruction register is decoded using special logic circuits, and these the operands are retrieved by data transfer operations uh, using the address mode specified in the instruction. You, the question is, is it a direct direct accessing mode or is it an indirect accessing mode? And then the, in the execu execute phase, the primitive hardware operation is executed. And there might be some result of this execution and then the story, and we might have to store some result back to memory. So the storage is performed by means of data transfer operations. So this was a, uh, the uh, first overview of, of uh, the abstract machine and, and the interpreter and we looked at um, uh, the hardware machine as an example of a uh, abstract machine and we also uh, gave the Java virtual machine as an example of uh, an abstract machine.